Billy the yellow tail, the red tail black cock too. I better show you tail, mate. Hey, Our overseas viewers. That's absolutely beautiful cockatoos, particularly in flight, and they've got a long, slow wing beat. Now, we established that he had his basic wing reflexes, wing spread reflexes. So we're now, so we can say that there is, there is dullness of the brain because he is so dull in himself, and the dullness could be due to him being injured in the brain. We've just shown that he's got wounds that uh, could certainly match concussion. We've shown that he's got a, a sore eye and there's a scab just beneath his eye here. So that sore right eye is traumatic rather than chlamydia because there's a scab and a wound just under the eye. Just missed out being pecked in the eye. Um, and I'm now just running my fingers down. So from basically from here to here, the spinal cord seems to be functioning reasonably well. But from down... We're just going down here, there's um, a little bit of a, a mark there that we would prefer not to be there. There's a blood blood quill growing there. It, there's just a little bit of discoloration there, but I'm not feeling a, a broken back down to here. So far, I haven't sensed a broken spine. So he's molting, lots of, lots of blood quills. He's got his powder downs. Uh, look normal, down feathers that are giving rise to some powder in his plumage are normal, he doesn't look like he's got beacon feather and we're just coming down the spine right down here and we're looking to there there's his preen gland right there a little tuft of feathers right there is a special one and on either side at the base here there's a little bit of tissue that produces some oil that um, you can see that glistening on my finger there. That's the preen gland, and that's used for conditioning the feathers, um, and probably has a source of vitamin um, D. Now the hip, one hip is across here, so we're feeling his right hip is right there, and that's not bruised or whatever, and we haven't got a puncture wound or anything down where the sciatic nerve passes around behind the hip there. So that's good. And we're just feeling for his left hip, which is here, part of the feathers there. And um, there's no obvious wound in that area either. All right, so we've felt both legs. So the next step I want to do is just check a couple of reflexes. So I'm going to pinch a toe. Now it happens that there's a different nerve to this toe to that toe, this one. So we're just going to, right? That is not causing any reaction at all. And you can see I'm blanching my nail there. So that sensation is not registering in the spine there, right? It's not registering in the spine there. It's not registering, sorry, not registering in the brain. And nor is it in that one, not good. We go here. He's just lying here, and I haven't tranced him out that much. Right, he's not pulling his leg away. We haven't got any withdrawal reflexes. Okay, so that usually means that there is something severe going on in the spinal cord, um, usually in the region of about T, uh, sorry, L, L2, L. 4L5, somewhere in that area of the spine. So I think it would be worthwhile getting x-rays taken of him, but before we do that, I want to check him for um, signs of heavy metal poisoning bacteriologically. So if he hasn't been given antibiotics already, um, then he should have a normal fecal flora. Uh, he should have plenty of bacteria in the feces, and he should have normal crop flora. So before I stain the faecal smear, I'm about to get a crop smear. Crop and throat wash smear. So I'm just securing him in the towel like that, sending him lots of TLC and love. I'm tucking the, the, the tail and the towel under my elbow here, like that. 
I'm taking hold of his head being aware that he's got some sore spots and I'm stretching his neck out a little bit I'm putting my finger behind his head this finger ring finger goes behind the head this finger goes round about there I'll be pressing one jaw across to the left the lower jaw across to the left the right beak comes across to the right a bit and it makes a gap there for me to put the tube in I'm going over the back of his tongue I'm sliding the tube down the right side of his neck without any force if it doesn't want to go I don't want to push it so I'm just trying to find where where it will go once we go easily it should go easily and I'll just check here on the side of his neck I can feel the end of the tube right there there it is see me jiggling that up and down I've got the end of the tube there and I can feel his windpipe separate from the tube so I know I'm not in the windpipe critical thing right now this is just going down slowly okay all right the neck has to be straight for this to to go down there I'm feeling it I'm a fair way down we're down at the thoracic inlet at the moment there we are we're in the crop so putting some water in just distilled water or water for injection and something is getting on the end of the tube and like a valve effect so I have to try and flush around a little bit it could be a seed but now we're now getting a bit out and I've got some cloudy material out I've got a sample out of his throat and I've got no blood on the outside of the tube and I can make a smear of the outside of the tube and the liquid in the 